and I had this vision of, of arriving in the United States and, and seeing you know golden sandy beaches and, and the kind of girls who figured in Beach Boys videos and things. And instead, I ended up in uh, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware which was a lovely place, but it didn't really have many girls in it. And I couldn't quite figure out why until someone said, you know, this is the nation's gay summer capital. And I thought, lovely people, not my market, but lovely people. Connolly had a friend whose uncle owned the Black Point Inn in Scarborough. So he landed a job at the inn and immediately felt a connection, a genuine connection with Maine. I liked the scenery. I liked the people. Um, it wasn't too alien to me. I, I go to places like... Nevada or Arizona, and I have no point of connection with them. They're completely different landscapes. But Maine, I could kind of understand, it has this Irish connection, I suppose, going, going back a very long time. Does it surprise you more than three decades later that you still have this ongoing relationship with Maine, this great affection with Maine? It wasn't just a fling. This has been an enduring love affair. Oh, yeah. The more I find out about the place, the more I find out about its history, the more fascinating it becomes. I mean, it's huge. We could pretty much drop Ireland into it and lose it, you know. Um, so there are always these aspects of it to be, to be discovered. And as soon as I could afford to, I bought somewhere here because I thought, thought it was important to, I guess, some way to pay taxes, because at least once you're paying taxes, you feel like you're part of a community. But if I didn't have somewhere here, I would just always be a visitor. I would always just be somebody who was dropping in and staying in a hotel and giving you, you know, the door, door guy money. And I'm also funny, a city boy. You know, Maine is the great outdoors for so many people. I, I, give me the great indoors. I think the great outdoors is very overrated. Um, and so I quite like the feel of Portland as a city. It's not happenstance that we're here at the Great Lost Bear. This is a place that you've been fond of for a long time. You've patronized it. You've written about it. You've put it in your my, books. My son has worked here. Connolly believes that real life details make fiction better, which is why the Great Lost Bear is a place where his best known fictional character, private investigator Charlie Parker, sometimes hangs out. I never quite understood privatized having offices because they're not really in them very often. Why are you paying rent on that? Why are you paying a secretary that you can exchange lightly sexualized banter with? I mean, they just don't see the point. So occasionally he will do as we're doing here. It's, it's the morning, there aren't that many people here. He will take a booth somewhere quiet and they will bring this person coffee and they can have a discussion away from the public eye. You have been writing for quite a while now about Charlie Parker, private investigator. The stories are generally based in Maine, or at least always have a Maine connection. How many story, or how many books now have you written about Parker? Uh, I think, I struggle with this a little bit. I think the 20th is, is about to come out in September, uh, as far as, I think that's the 20th. That's a substantial number. Well, I don't have a proper job, Rob. You know, it keeps me off the streets, stops me whistling at girls. But I like writing, and, um, and I do it every day for those people out there who may want to write. It, there's not much point in saying I'm going to take two, two months off during the summer from my job and write my great Russian novel. You know, you're not going to do that. It has to be something you do every day. How are you different as a writer now from when you started out? What would, what would be the most substantial That's difference? Good question. It's all you become less certain of yourself. When I was young, I think when you're young, I was 20, 29 when my book was first accepted and 30 when it was published, so I was quite young. And you do think you know everything. Um, and as time goes on, you realize you know less and less and less. And it's probably made me a better writer. During the pandemic, we've all had more time on our hands than we had before. One of your great passions is music. You come up with music suggestions that pair with your writing. Have you discovered some new music, new bands, new artists who I've been, I've been going got, you've gotten hooked on? I've been going backwards. So, so much new stuff coming out all of the time. And I think, I haven't even read, I haven't really listened to the old stuff yet. And there are books I haven't read, you know, and I'm conscious of those gaps in my knowledge. I, I want to fill them in. So a lot of what I'm doing now is kind of going back and, and trying to fill in those gaps in popular music, in jazz, in, in classical a little bit. I'm, I, it's another thing when you ask me, how have I changed? I'm just conscious more of, of what I don't know. What do you want to do that you haven't done? I still haven't written the book. You know, that book where I can go, yeah, that was what I was trying to say all along. And I suspect if I did, I'd stop writing. You know, I wonder if that was the case with Harper Lee and To Kill a Mockingbird. Will, you know, the park. will you know when you've written the book? God, no. No, that's the whole point. <laughs> I write it and then, you know, sometimes I do. I, I wrote a book called He, which is a book about Stan Laurel. And I thought for a moment that might be the book. And then I thought, no, it's, it was nearly there. I haven't quite managed to do it. Um, you know, so I, to keep doing that, to keep, to keep trying to, to get closer and closer to it, because I think that's what writers do. They keep circling that book. They keep 
getting close to it. Sometimes you almost nudge it, but you never quite get it. And maybe you shouldn't. Maybe that's what you're saying. Maybe it's a good idea that you don't ever write the book, because then you really will just have to stop.